Hi friends, for those who don't know me, my name is Miss Jordan and I am the Youth Education Coordinator at MOA. Welcome to today's MOA's Mini Masters at Home program. Today we're going to be starting off with an art discussion, followed by story time, and conclude with an art project. In this first video, we will have both our art discussion and story time. Then on our website, wisconsinart.org, we will have a second video in which we'll have the art project. In addition, there will be a downloadable PDF file which will have all the supplies needed for that project. So let's start with our art discussion for today. Today we're going to be looking at a painting in Moa's Bruna collection. Today we're going to be looking at Francesco's Bacusa's painting, Moonlit Waves. What do you first notice about this painting? I notice the colors. What about you? What colors do you see? I notice that we have a lot of extreme colors in this painting. We have lots of darks, like black, and blue, and purple, but we also have lots of light colors and bright colors, like white, yellow, green, tan, and gold. Did I miss anything? What is this painting of? It looks like it's a nighttime sky with the moon reflecting in the water. And maybe around the water we have some trees, maybe some houses. What do you think? What do you think about the texture of this painting? I think Spacuza does a great job at giving his brush strokes some texture. It doesn't feel super smooth. It looks like there might be actual texture or the brush strokes look a little rough. Do you notice anything else? Today's theme is all about nighttime. So we're gonna go read our story and then we'll come back to our painting to see if we can make any other connections. So let's go to story time. Today we're going to be reading A Bedtime for Bear by Bonnie Becker. This book was published through Candlewick Press, and if anyone has questions about the copyright information, it can all be found on this page. I would also like to point out that we are able to read this story for Many Masters at Home through Amazon's free Kindle download program. All of the books we have chosen to read have, can all be found on the free ebook list on Amazon. So on to our story time, A Bedtime for Bear. Everything had to be just so for Bear's bedtime. His glass of water had to sit on the exact right spot on his bedstand. His favorite pillow must be nicely fluffed. His nightcap needed to be snug. Most of all, it had to be quiet. Very, very quiet. One evening, Bear had heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. When he opened the door, there stood Mouse, small and gray and bright-eyed. He clasped a tiny suitcase in his paw. I am here to spend the night, exclaimed Mouse with a happy wiggle of whiskers. Surely we agreed on next Tuesday, protested Bear. No, you most definitely said tonight. Oh, said Bear. Bear had never had an overnight guest before. Guests could quite possibly mess things up and make noise, and Bear needed quiet, absolute quiet, at bedtime. Even so, Bear and Mouse enjoyed an evening of checkers and warm cocoa, and soon it was time for bed. Remember, I must have absolute quiet, reminded Bear. Oh, indeed, said Mouse. Bear set his glass of water, adjusted his nightcap, fluffed his favorite pillow, and climbed into bed. It was very, very quiet. He closed his eyes. Bristle, bristle, bristle. Bear heard a noise. It was Mouse brushing his teeth. Ahem, Bear cleared his throat in a reminding sort of way. Oh, sorry, said Mouse. Bear closed his eyes again. Hmm, hmm, pa, ma. Mouse hummed while he put on his nightshirt. Pa, pa, pa. Absolute quiet, muttered Bear most patiently. Deepest apologies, said Mouse. Creak, squeak, rattle went Mouse's bed as he hopped in. Bear jammed his pillow over his ears, gritted his teeth, and closed his eyes. He was just about to drift off when... Good night, Bear Mouse, called softly. Bear tried to pretend he was asleep. Good night, Mouse called a little louder. My ears are highly sensitive, cried Bear. Really? How interesting, Mouse said. Can you hear this? Mouse mumbled into his pillow. Yes! Amazing! How about this? Mouse said under, from under his pillow. Quiet! Mouse slipped under his blankets, crawled into the bottom of his bed and whispered, Can you hear? Silence! roared Bear. 
Mouse slipped from his bed, went into the closet, and said in the tiniest possible voice, into the furthest, darkest, teeniest possible corner of the closet. Surely you can't. Will this torment never cease? Wailed Bear. Sorry, Bear. Good night, Bear, whispered Mouse, tiptoeing back into bed, as quiet as a, well, you know. Bear fluffed his favorite pillow, adjusted his nightcap, and waited. But there was no more sound from Mouse. At last, it was quiet. Very, very quiet. Bear heard a shuffling sound. Mouse, is that you? No answer. Bear heard a crick, crick, crick on the floorboard. I know it's you. No answer. You can't fool me, Bear growled, but he didn't sound very certain. Bear heard a low mo moaning noise. Mouse? Silence. Bear was sure something rustled on the floor. Mouse, he cried, wake up! Mouse stumbled out of bed, small and gray and sleepy-eyed. What is it? Bear couldn't see any rustling, moaning sort of thing in his room. His room looked quite like it always looked. Nothing, I bear, so clutching his blanket to his chin. I must have been talking in my sleep. Bear chuckled. It was rather quivery. Ah, uh, said Mouse with a glance at Bear. Can I peek under your bed, asked Mouse. Sometimes I like to check for things, you know. Well, if you insist, said Bear. Nothing, said Mouse from under the bed. You'll want to check behind the curtains, I suppose, Bear said. All clear, declared Mouse a moment later. You better check the closet, offered Bear. Then you won't be the least bit nervous. Mouse came out of the closet, dusting his paws. Not a thing. Thank you, Bear. Good night. Oh, wait, said Bear. You want a bedtime story, I expect, said Bear, for your nerves. For my nerves, said Mouse. Oh, indeed, I'm quite shaken. Then with an eager flick of his tail, he settled onto Bear's favorite pillow. And Bear told him all about the adventures of the brave, strong Bear and the very frightened little Mouse. Soon began, Bear began to yawn. Mouse yawned too. Good night, Bear, said Mouse. Good night, Mouse, Bear mumbled. Then Bear began to snore loudly, but Mouse just smiled. And soon Mouse and Bear were fast to sleep. The end. Okay, so we are back at our painting after finishing our story to see if we can make any other observations or connections between both of them. So we know that Bear and Mouse had a sleepover at nighttime, and our painting is of the nighttime sky. Do you think we have any other connections between the book and the painting? Do you think maybe one of the houses on this water could be maybe Bear's house? When you have sleepovers, do you ever look outside at the night sky and look at the moon? Do you need it to be absolute quiet? Do you think the waves in the water would make noise? Why don't you discuss what other connections you guys can make? And when you're done, make sure you go onto our website, wisconsinart.org, to join us for our art project for today. Again, we will be keeping the theme of nighttime, and make sure to check the PDF file to get all the supplies needed for that project. Thank you so much for joining us for the part one of today's Mini Masters at Home program, and I hope to see you for the art project.